strikes now to Josh Reddick. He has struck out four in addition to allowing the unearned run on the other side of the scorecard. Jared Parker has retired seven straight. More pitching and defense in this series this afternoon. Appeal down to third, and that's where Mike DeMuro said he did not swing the bat. And that's what Mike DeMiro's looking at. Did he intend to swing? Of course, I think once the bat leaves your shoulder, you intend to swing. Just happened to hold up. Reddick with a high drive into right field. Hunter looking back, and that one is gone. Three for 24 in the postseason entering the afternoon. A big solo home run here to lead off the fourth. And boy, the left-hand hitters like it down and in. I mentioned how both Lowry and Moss had taken so many pitches, but lefties love that ball down and in. That's exactly where Reddick got it after the check swing and lofts it over the right field wall. A ball and a strike now to Steven Vogt. Josh Reddick's first home run since September 15th. Yeah, and Anibal Sanchez knew it. Yeah, I think you, you tend to recognize that sound. Vogt with a drive to right. Hunter looking up on this ball, and it's off the base of the fence. Steven Vogt trying for third. He'll be there without a play. Well, instead of an easy, quick inning, he gets a check swing from Josh Reddick, then a home run. And there's another breaking ball. See, the, the breaking ball not quite as crisp. And I don't know if it's the, the dry, cool weather that Sanchez isn't getting a good grip on it. But that one just kind of hung right there in the middle of the strike zone, and Vogt took advantage of it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Look, look at that catcher getting around yeah, the pillows. Yeah, right about there, he knows. He's got a triple. That's right. It's a gun show. <laughs> Here's Eric Sogard now. The Tigers play the infield in. Sogard swinging away. Somewhere in the world, Matt Garza is tweeting about Eric Sogard as we speak. Uh, While well, he's tweeting, Jim Leland has uh, one of his regular starters during the season. Rick Borcello warming up in the bullpen, sinker balling. Porcello right there. There's a chopper to the drawn in second baseman in Fonte, and that's the first down of the inning. And the, the reason I bring up the tweeting, especially with Matt Garza, is from an incident earlier this season. <laughs> A Tigers A's game where Sogard got to Garza with a couple of bunts, and it really, it really sent Garza to the uh, to the tweet factory. Expressed his displeasure for the strategy on social media, and it was talked about quite a bit in Oakland and in Arlington. There's Coco Crisp now with the runner at third, and one away. So so much for the uh, the squeeze play with Sogard. Infield still in for the Tigers. Crisp is two for two today. The home run against Sanchez doesn't happen often. He yielded only nine in over 180 innings during the regular season. In fact, had the lowest home run rate in the American League. Coco pops it into shallow left. Peralta is there. Folks going to try it. The throw to the plate is not in time. Hey. 
Three nothing Oakland. Well, Crisp is doing what Bob Melvin said he had to do. He's he's driving the bus right now, getting on and driving a run. And I'll tell you, Johnny Peralta, for not playing a lot of left field. There's a pitch move back across the plate. I don't think Crisp thought he had enough of it, but this is a pretty good throw. It, did, it took a soft bounce on the infield grass there. It didn't skip where Avila could maybe catch and tag. It took a high bounce, but it was an accurate throw. Josh Donaldson now with two out and two in in the inning. In just three plus innings this afternoon, Oakland has matched its extra base hit output from the first two games combined. The crisp double, Reddick's home run, and votes triple. That's headed for the gap. Hunter closing ground, and the nine time gold lover prevents any further damage in the top half of the fourth. However, the swing and A's are swinging it here in Detroit this afternoon. Two in the fourth inning to take a three nothing lead. Back to this division series telecast on MLB Network presented by Geico with Sam Ryan and Jim Cott. Matt Vaskersian here in Detroit where the Oakland A's have an early three nothing lead in game three of this best of five. It'll be Torrey Hunter leading things off in the home half of inning number four. Hunter Cabrera and Fielder against Jared Parker. And Matty starting pitchers they they want a rhythm to the game. And right now they'll call it shutdown innings. It's so important to shut the opposition down after your team has put a couple on the board. A big challenge for Parker this innings because because he has to deal with the heart of the Detroit lineup. Granted they haven't been productive thus far. That's the battle cry when you get three runs as a pitcher you run out there say let's get them out in a hurry and get our team right back in the batter's box. It is a sleeping giant speaking collectively of this Tigers lineup. It's between Hunter Cabrera and Fielder you're talking about 17 combined all star appearances. And they have been held conspicuously quiet in the series. Two balls and a strike to count to Tory Hunter. Recall that Jared Parker opened the third against Omar Infante with a three and one count, and then Infante popped to right. I would not be surprised for a moment to see Hunter take. Or whack a 3 1 pitch into left. Lead off single in the Tigers' half of the fourth. Does the second Detroit hit of the afternoon and the table is set for the big guys. Miguel Cabrera is single in the first game with two away and the base is empty. Big career numbers against the Oakland A's. Over 300 against Oakland, a slugging percentage of over 600. It should be noted, however, that before folks in the Bay Area get too concerned and, and feel taken advantage of, Cabrera is hitting over 300 lifetime and slugging over 500 against nine of the 14 American League clubs. He is an equal opportunity destroyer. Parker out of the stretch for just the second at bat today. And Cabrera swings and sends a drive well struck out to right. Read it back. Crisp is there in right center to make the catch and there is one away. 
you're Jared Parker, you breathe a little sigh of, re sigh of relief. You got Cabrera to hit it to the deepest part of the ballpark. And Chris there to get it back in, and Hunter retreats to first base. So here's Fielder now. He popped in the infield to retire the side in the first. We talked about Fielder's career postseason numbers the last time he was at the plate. Unfortunately for Tiger fans, those numbers become even less impressive with runners on base. Just a 170 postseason hitter with runners aboard. You know, if, I'm, if I'm Jared Parker, I don't worry too much about Torrey Hunter. I know he has speed. I, I'd be a little more concerned with Prince Fielder and Victor Martinez. Hunter could steal second and third. And if you get these two guys out, he's still not going to score. A strike to make it one to one. Victor Martinez, the switch hitting DH this afternoon, waiting next. He lined out in the second on a well hit ball to open the frame. So far, A's pitching coach Kurt Young has to like the way things have gone for Jared Parker. Vote wants it on the corner. 1 1 is delivered there and fouled away. A ball and two strikes. 505 consecutive games played by Prince Fielder. That is the longest active consecutive game streak in baseball. You got quite a ways to go until we get to Cal Ripken. Change up. Fielder soft liner foul. Ooh, Donaldson clangs against the wall. Nice effort. Took a quick look to see where he was, and then fortunately he was able to kind of bend his knees and cushion that slide against the fence. Change up the last pitch. Those that watch a lot of baseball familiar with it, but the side signs like a lot of things in baseball been the same for years. One's a fastball, two's a curve, three's a slider. Wiggle your fingers is a change like that. That's fouled away. The changeup is Jared Parker's swing and miss pitch. Opponents have hit just about a buck 70 on it this year. And the miss percentage on his change, as you can see, is much higher than league average and, in fact, the best in Major League Baseball. He'll get a whiff on almost 50% of his changeups. Fielder doing a nice job to hang around on that pitch. Still the ball in two strikes. Hunter stays put at first and Prince lays off it's two and two. That's probably one of the or is the biggest difference Matt in young talented pitchers like Parker and, and many more like him than pitchers of my era is their secondary pitches. They have more of them and they have more command of them. I mean the changeup now is a strikeout weapon. It used to be just an off speed pitch to try to get the hitter out front and hit a pop up. Field. Hunter wraps around to third, and the Tigers are in business here in the bottom of the fourth. 
But a fine plate appearance by Prince Fielder. Well, they kept going away, away, away with the changeup. Opted not to try the fastball up and in, and Fielder did a nice job of. I don't know whether he was anticipating that, but he did a nice job of waiting and just poking it over the third baseman's head. Actually, from that swing, it kind of looked like he did look for it out there. So now the switch hitting DH, and perhaps, perhaps the best pure hitter in today's lineup for the Tigers, Victor Martinez. Stay outside. And Martinez falls behind 0 1. Hunter led off the inning with a base hit. And then Fielder's one out single put runners at first and third. Twenty scoreless innings and counting, and that's a, a number that Victor Martinez hopes goes away right here. Nobody around these parts wants to be reminded of the 2012 World Series. And they come inside to him on 01, and Martinez bangs it past Moss into right field. Hunter scores. Three to one, Oakland. They didn't come inside the fielder. They tried it to Victor Martinez. Got a little too much of the plate. And down the line. And you see right there, as Bob Melvin said, Barton is the better fielder of the two first basemen. Moss known more for his hitting. Not that that was an easy play, but I think a little quicker reaction. He could have got a glove on it, at least gotten one out at first base. Kurt Young comes out for a quick visit. Runners at second and third to run in one away for Johnny Peralta. And now this sold out Comerica Park crowd is every bit into the proceedings. Oh, and one to Peralta. He grounded out to the left side back in the second. The less than organic fit with Peralta as a left fielder today has already been apparent. Stephen Vogt able to score on a sack fly to left on a shallow fly ball. And Peralta would love to get some of that back right here at the plate. One and one. The Tigers led the American League with batting average with runners in scoring position this year. Hit 282 in spots like this. Again, the best in the circuit. Peralta cashes in. Fielder scores. Martinez scores. And this game is tied at three. Wasn't a line drive, but it pays off for Jim Leal, and actually, it's a pretty good pitch. Parker runs it in on the handle, but Peralta fights it off, and he rewards Jim Leland's decision. He said, "I'll sacrifice some defense if I can get somebody to knock in some runs." 
And both of those things have happened this afternoon. Here's Alex Avila now. The 2011 All-Star has homered in his career against Jared Parker. Well, here we are not even through four complete innings this afternoon, Jim. And the A's and Tigers have combined to score as many runs as they did in games one and two combined. Avila falls behind 0 and 2. Good change up there. That's the one he would have probably liked to Prince Fielder. That bottom fell out of that one. The one to Fielder hung just high enough for him to poke it into left. Omar Infante waiting next with one away, a runner on, and three runs in. Ball and two strikes to Avila. Nice block by Steven Vogt. Looked like the ball hit the plate, actually hit in front of the plate. Vogt does a nice job again. Things that catchers practice on in spring training by the hour. Just blocking that ball and keeping it in front of him, prevent the runner from advancing. One of the reasons Stephen Vogt is here in the big leagues with the A's. The catching dynamic has changed a lot since opening day. Parker again out of the stretch, the one two. Another change, this one misses low, two balls and two strikes. Well, Jared Parker was sailing along, had retired seven in a row before the single by Torrey Hunter. He got the loud out against Cabrera. Fielder with a base hit. Martinez doubled in a run. And then Peralta singles in two to tie it. The Tigers are not a running team. And not only do the Tigers not run as a team, Johnny Peralta is not a guy that's going to steal a lot of bases. In fact, Detroit has stolen fewer bases than any team in Major League Baseball this year. Two, two, and excuse me, roller out to third for Donaldson. Off balance throw is in time to get Avila. Peralta advances into scoring position now with two away. A base hit from Omar Infante can give the Tigers the first lead of the afternoon. His first pitch to the Tigers second baseman will be Parker's 25th of the inning. Into the corner and foul. It, it almost seems that was a breaking ball rare for Parker. It's mostly fastball changeup but he's gone to that changeup so often that he's never really shown the Tigers that good he's got a good fastball. And boy, when they can sit in that batter's box and kind of anticipate a changeup, you don't have to hit it hard. You just kind of do what Fielder did. Oh, one is grounded at third. There's Donaldson for it to retire the side and prevent any further trouble. However, the 20 consecutive inning scoreless streak is over with an exclamation point. Hunter. Fielder, Martinez, and Peralta combined to tie it at three.
This division series telecast on MLB Network is brought to you by the 2013 Scion FRS. It leaves everyone else in the dust. And sponsored in part by Axe Hairstyling because first impressions count. And by Jack Daniels Tennessee Honey. Fly straight, drink responsibly. A brand new storyline in Detroit this afternoon. Back with Jim Cotton, Sam Ryan, Matt Vasquez in a 3-3 ball game as we head to the top of the fifth. Jed Lowry, Brandon Moss, and Yoenis Cespedes for Oakland. And now it's uh, Anibal Sanchez's turn to see if he can come up with a shutdown inning. He has to go through the middle of the Oakland lineup. Well, those innings are so important. To a starting pitcher just to keep the, the flow and the rhythm of the game going for his team. Well, Sanchez has had a hard time so far this afternoon retiring the leadoff batter. They have reached base safely in all four innings. In fact, Reddick led off the fourth with a solo home run. Yeah, his off speed pitches haven't been as crisp. The curve or the, the change, uh, his best pitch. Has been that two seam fastball coming in on the left hand hitters riding back across the corner. Lowry Moss and Cespit is here in the fifth. This part of the order has been held without a base hit so far this afternoon. The foul tip gets a piece of Alex Avila. He can't hang on to it. You notice the mask of. Uh, Al Avila, I was talking to Ray Fossey, former catcher for the A's, who's taken plenty of blows. He's now gone back to the old steel mask for a long time, catchers using a titanium. He's taken a couple blows on foul balls. Of course, concussion's a big issue for catchers these days. Six strikeouts this afternoon for Anibal Sanchez. Well, Sanchez, one of the three Tiger starters this year to post a 200 plus strikeout season, along with Max Scherzer and Justin Verlander. And these kind of years don't come along very often. In fact, the Tigers of this season are just the third team ever to have three pitchers enjoy a 200 plus strikeout campaign. And Jim Cott did it as a part of that 67 Twins. I must have pitched 400 innings to get that many strikeouts. <laughs> Here's Brandon Moss now. I tell you, Sanchez did what uh, what Parker couldn't. As uh, they used to say, when you left the the dugout as a pitcher, old Broadway term, get that leading lady, get that number one hitter. That's most important. And Moss quickly behind 0 and 2. Yeah, he's dealing now. I mean, that's it's almost like smelling the finish line for a starter. You you're back in the game. That that has some good drop to it. Must have been. A changeup. You could see it in his eyes. It's almost like this is his ninth inning. He's seen if I can shut him down here, get my team back in the batter's box, it'll have a big uh, influence on the outcome of this game. A couple of A's hitters here that can change the dialogue with one swing of the bat. Moss hit 30 during the regular season. And after the home run derby at City Field this summer, everybody knew what Ioannis Cespedes was capable of doing. He waits on deck. Boss with a drive to right. Torrey Hunter doesn't even move. That one is gone. Brandon Moss was one for eight with seven strikeouts in the series until that swing of the bat. They run through the congratulatory tunnel there. Wow, that thing got out in a hurry. Looked like they tried to get. A fastball up and moved out across the plate. Most left hand hitters, low ball hitters, but like Pedro Alvarez did for the Pirates, he got on top of that high fastball and turned it over to right field. Here's Joanna Cespedes now. 
Oakland back out on top by a run on the second home run of the afternoon for the A's. And it marks the first time since last September that Anibal Sanchez has been touched up for more than one home run in a game. Yeah, now he's uh, he's throwing some grudge fastballs right now. He reached back and threw those two uncharacteristic. There's his reaction. I'd say he wasn't pleased with that. No, and, and now he's rushed three of them up there. It's taken him completely out of his rhythm. Two balls and a strike to count to Jonas Cespedes. A perennial Sanchez problem waits on deck in Seth Smith. What do you think of that uh, that homecoming king tunnel thing that the A's do after a home run. It's nice. Yeah there's uh, you know I, I'd rather see that than guys dancing in the end zone. <laughs> they have that uh, they have that kind of. I, I call it almost a high school camaraderie. And I mean that as a compliment. Yes, yeah. but it swings and misses. Yeah, it's not you're drawing. You're not drawing attention to yourself. It's a team thing, for and, sure. And that's good. And that's kind of how they go. Nothing really jumps out at you on the stat sheet with Oakland. Yeah, Moss hit 30 home runs during the course of the regular season, but it, as the national media may have been concerned, they were a quiet 30. That's not a fair statement, but that's kind of the way it was. Well, it's like their third baseman. He's a, a quiet MVP. There's the home run tunnel. He's a quiet MVP candidate. When you look at the, he won't win it, but uh, Josh Donaldson put up some pretty impressive numbers. You know, back to your uh, back to your, your football thing to take nothing away from the uh, the 80s vintage Washington Redskins, but the Oakland A's the last couple of years have been something of a fun bunch. Oh yeah. And Cespedes has a base hit with one away in the fifth. Well, I think Jim Leila has got to realize Sanchez not the usual Sanchez that he saw all year this year you the two home runs are an indication of that. Just a little sluggish he's sending Avila out to the mound maybe. Give the bullpen a little more time to get ready particularly with a guy stepping into the batter's box that has been very very tough on him. Yeah the bullpen is hot behind him. Rick Porcello was the loser. In game two. No, I thought he I thought we'd see uh, Jim Leland walk out there but he's going to give him another shot. So here's Seth Smith now. Unless this this could also be part of the ploy if your relief pitcher that you want to bring in isn't ready. You tell the pitcher throw the first base a couple times and then they'll ring the phone or raise the hat and say now he's ready. I think he'd like to bring the left hander in. Yeah Jose Alvarez getting hot in a hurry. Ball and no strikes the count to Seth Smith. He has singled and struck out today. There had to come a point in this series and we've apparently reached it today where the home run would play a role. All the home run thunder that the Tigers bring in terms of the backs of the baseball cards. And an Oakland A's team who for the second straight year. Have led Major League Baseball in home runs after the All Star break. Next offering home to Smith is fouled away and it's one and one. Seth Smith with plenty of postseason experience not only with the Oakland A's but two postseason dances in his time with the Colorado Rockies. The storyline last year in the division series as far as Oakland was concerned was young players with a lot of postseason inexperience that no longer applies this year. Bob Melvin 
deservedly so gets a lot of the credit for what's happened in Oakland a 94 win campaign last year 96 victories this season. He's not a manager that likes the attention same can be said of Jim Leland. But with much less and I mean no disrespect Bob Melvin has put the A's position by position in a place to succeed for the last couple of years. The next offering is Smith. That one stays upstairs as well. And now Sanchez has fallen behind three balls and a strike with Josh Reddick up next. And Billy Bean would get a lot of credit for that also. You know, the, the money ball film didn't really portray Billy Bean as to what he's done. The, the A's success hasn't been about money ball, it's been about good pitching and, and picking up bargains like they did this year. Billy Bean's done a good job of providing Bob Melvin with that kind of talent. It's awfully tough to shake that tag, you know. Yeah. I mean, when when they make a movie about you, and when Brad Pitt's in it, right, they're going to think you're that forever. And that it really that's that's not what this A's team is so was much. It, wasn't what that one was either. It was Zito, Mulder, and Hudson, three great pitchers. Well, I don't I don't know if this is sent in from from the. I mean, he he's only inspiring Cespedes a little bit more because. It's kind of proven they haven't been able to throw base dealers out. He hasn't been able to to hold them or to deliver the ball to the plate quickly enough. And anytime you're throwing over that off of with a 3 1 count, you got to get your focus back on making a pitch to Seth Smith. Might just be taking out a little frustration throwing that fastball to first base. Cespit is just seven for 14 as a base dealer this year. Ah! Oh, close at first base. My yeah. goodness. And that wasn't even the good move that time. No, I think uh, Cespit is taking a little nap there. I mean, he got to pay attention. Well, if he went in belly first, he could get there quicker with the oven mitt. He's wearing that big protective mitt over his left hand, and you see that a lot around baseball these days when players get aboard. Smith with a drive into the opposite field. That ball's well hit and carrying. Peralta back, and that one's gone! Well, they went. Oakland's third home run of the afternoon. That'll knock Annabelle Sanchez from the mix, and the A's have taken a 6-3 lead. Santa Maria. Jim Leland has made the move to his bullpen. 6-3 Oakland. We'll be right back. Well, the way this series had gone and the way Anibal Sanchez had thrown the ball all year long, some very unlikely results here this afternoon. Nobody saw this coming. Sanchez unable to finish five. He gives up three home runs and he yields on the bad end of a 6-3 score. So now it's Josh Reddick facing the new pitcher. After the T-Mobile pitching change, it's the left-hander Jose Alvarez. I'm sure Jim Leland right now he he started to head up that step that looked like a time or two and said well I'm going to give Sanchez one more hitter which was a bit surprising Smith had had a lot of success against Sanchez but the past history and as successful as Anibal has been uh, you know you get a little you get a little street credit for that and your manager will hang with you for a while. Shocking. As tough as it was for runs to be scored, and now all of a sudden each starter gets three runs, and neither one can go out and shut the opposition down. So, you know, as usual, these games end up in the hand of the bullpen. The first two was primarily the dominance of the starters, but most games these days, and that'll be the case today before it's over. 
this is reminding me of a the night that you and I spent here the afternoon you and I spent here almost a year ago as Reddick goes chasing game two of the series right Tommy Malone and Doug Fister and a lead that kept going back and forth pitch moved out across the plate about belt high and give Smith credit for driving it but it also you could tell the way Peralta drifted this ball is really carried out to left center. Here's Steven vote now he has tripled and scored a run today. The American League's ERA leader. Driven from the afternoon after giving up six runs in four and a third. Jose Alvarez, for his part, was named the Tigers minor league pitcher of the year this season. Eight and six with an ERA under three at Triple A Toledo this year. Two balls and a strike is his count to Stephen Vogt. Down to three and one with Eric Sogard waiting on deck. Oakland felt a lot better about their chances at the start of the series once into the Detroit bullpen. No disrespect, but you'd feel better about anybody if you can get past Furlander and Scherzer. And there's ball four to vote. So a two out base runner aboard now for Eric Sogard. The six runs on eight hits for an Oakland offense that had really been non existent the first two games of the series. And Jared Parker has that cushion to work with once again. Sogard dumps a fly ball into shallow right. Hunter is there to put it away. Nothing further in the fifth. However, a pair of home runs. Have reclaimed a three run advantage. Moss and Smith go deep. And it's 6 3 A's. Next half inning, we'll visit live with Oakland Game 2 hero Sonny Gray. Next. Division Series action continues on TBS. The Cardinals try to fight off elimination against the Pirates in Game 4. Then the Rays look to avoid a sweep in Tampa against the Red Sox. And in the nightcap, the Dodgers try to close out the Braves in Los Angeles. All today on TBS. Jose Iglesias leads things off in the Tigers' half of the fifth. The number nine batter followed by Austin Jackson and Torrey Hunter as Jared Parker goes back to work. Yeah, he's going to see if he can stop the bleeding. He couldn't do it in the fourth. Sanchez couldn't do it in the fifth. Jared Parker, one of three Oakland A's since the team relocated to Oakland in 1968. As Iglesias sends that one toward the gap, but it's Cespedes to make the catch. One away. Parker, as I mentioned, one of three Oakland A's younger than Sonny Gray. To make his first postseason start and to take nothing away from Jared Parker or Barry Zito or Vita Blue, who were all younger than Sonny Gray when they made their first postseason assignment. None of them were better than Sonny Gray on Saturday night in Oakland. And Sonny joins us live here from Detroit. Sonny, congratulations on such a magnificent night. Have you had time to digest this whole thing, or, or are you right back into the series looking forward to your next assignment? Yeah, actually, it was nice having an off day after that. You know that long win or the long game, so it was nice to kind of have that off day and and get our get our thoughts back together as a team and and come out here today and and play and try to try to go up on this series. Sunny, that Sunny is usually a nickname, but I noticed that's actually your your given name, isn't it? Where'd it come from? It's given. Yeah, it's my my grandfather. It was my grandfather's nickname. So my mom and my dad apparently had a big de big debate. Whether they should name name it or not, and you know, it turns out uh, I kind of kind of like it. 
And you're a you're a Vandy guy like David Price. Oh yeah, there's a lot of Vandy guys. A lot of Vandy guys playing in the playoffs, which is really awesome to see. Yeah. Three balls and no strikes. The count to Austin Jackson. We're visiting with Sonny Gray. Game two hero for the Oakland A's. One of a couple of game two heroes. And Sonny, I would imagine that part of what made Saturday night even sweeter for you is the fact that the guy that you work with in Triple A, Stephen Vogt, was the guy that cashed in with the game-winning hit. I mean, the Sacramento River Cats have never been better represented than they were Saturday night. Yeah, it was it was crazy. Vogt coming through with that big hit. A guy who I've thrown to all year long, which was it was really nice to to have him up here. And yeah, thrown to him all year long, and then he comes up in the in the ninth inning and with the bases loaded and, and does the job. And it was awesome, really awesome moment for him. And uh, just so happy for him. He couldn't happen to a nicer guy. You know, Sonny, I was talking to some of the Tiger hitters about your your pitches. We know you have a live fastball, great overhand curve, but I don't know. If you throw it by design, but they said you had a little cutter action on it. They could see a dot like you'd see on a slider. Kind of, is that a pitch you throw by design, or that's your natural fastball? I don't do that on purpose. I didn't start throwing a four seam fastball. That's just my normal four seam. I didn't start throwing that until until at the end of last year. I was, I'd always been a two seam guy, and I started throwing that at the end of last year, and it always had a little cut on. And we tried to take that away, and and then. You know, we weren't able to do that, and it's kind of I've able, been able to command it a, a, a lot better. So it's I know it happens, but I, I, I don't do it on purpose. That's for sure. Well, it, it's a heck of a pitch to have. Uh, I know we used to play catch on the sideline. We called it a Navy ball. It was a sailor. Boy, that's a that's a mistake right there by Jared Parker. Your team gives you a three run lead. You don't want to issue any base on balls. But what, let me ask you this about the curveball. Where did you pick up that curveball? That's awesome. That's, before your time, you probably never heard of my teammate Burt Blylevin, Hall of Famer, but that's very Burt Blylevin like. Yeah, I, you're right, I haven't. I, I probably should. <laughs> no, you should. No, you're it's fine. all good. But, uh, yeah, it was, I started throwing it, you know, right in high school, right before high school started, and it's always been a pitch that I've been able to control and been able to throw pretty much wherever I want, and it just happened one, one day I was, I was gripping it. You know, and then my my dad just said, "Hey, move your fingers like this, and and, and throw and, and throw it the same way." So I, I move my fingers like that, and, and it's it's been there for me ever since. Nothing and one. The count to Tory Hunter batting with one out and one on. And Sonny, before we let you go, the at bat that you had against Tory Hunter back in Oakland, where you missed a little up and in, and then Tory called time and shook his head a little bit. And Tory Hunter is one of the gentlemen in the game. And later on, he admitted that he was trying to get in your head a little bit, and uh, apparently that didn't work. Is that something that you were aware of at the time? Did you suspect that that was what Tory was doing? You know, for my short time being up here and, and knowing Tory and knowing how every single guy in baseball talks about him, that's actually the first thing that that came to my head was that I, you know that he was you know maybe trying to maybe trying to get in there or something, and you know it kind of get it kind of lit a little fire and, and you know gave me a little extra adrenaline for sure. Well, listen, we appreciate you taking some time with us during the game, Sonny. Best of luck moving forward, and uh, it was a lot of fun watching you pitch on Saturday. Thanks, guys. Hunter was moved out of the way there by Jared Parker and has a 1 1 count here with one out and a runner aboard. Tigers down three. And he's just trying to work the. Uh, he's trying to work out a base on balls. He wants to get up, uh, he wants to get out for Cabrera. Chop to third. Donaldson with a great pickup to Sogard for one, and the A's double him off. That is pretty. Woo. With Miguel Cabrera looming on deck, Oakland turns a big double play. Nothing in the Tigers' half of the fifth. Not for Tiger fans, but for A's fans, that was some play. Rookie left-hander Jose Alvarez continues here in the top half of the sixth as Rick Porcello stays hot in the Tiger bullpen. It'll be Crisp, Donaldson, and Lowry for the A's. Coco's been a big part of the A's 6-3 lead this afternoon. A double, a base hit. He scored a run, driven in another. And 
will add a ground ball to shortstop to that line. Jose Iglesias, a brilliant defender, makes that play rather routinely, as difficult a chance as it may have been, one away. Very Derek Jeter like. I think Derek Jeter, from the time he came up, no one makes the play that play as well as Derek. And uh, Iglesias, very similar. Those short hops are, are tough. Oakland bullpen is getting hot behind Jared Parker for the first time this afternoon. Dan Otero the right hander is up and warming. So here's Josh Donaldson now. Though just 0 for 2. He has played some very strong third base. Yeah that play right there I mean. It almost knocked his glove off. And just it turns into an easy double play but if that just caroms one way or the other. You got Cabrera hitting with two men on representing the tying run. I mean, that is one of those not in the box score. If the A's win this game, you look back, and that's worth a save. I pointed out that Donaldson started the season as a catcher. He didn't. He started his career as a catcher. He settled in and really found a home at third base in Oakland. His is a contract that's under club control for a couple more years. And though he was not named an all star this year for understandable reasons none of which had to do with his performance it's a very crowded position in the American League. He has established himself as one of the premier third basemen in the circuit. Renaissance period of American League third baseman. I know that kind of a fancy term to throw out yeah. there. However, when Adrian Beltre and Josh Donaldson are left off the All Star team at that <laughs> position, you know how good it is. Evan Longoria, because he was nicked up in the first half, not named an All Star this year. Donaldson sprays that into the opposite field. Well hit. Hunter is back on it to the deepest part of the ballpark. Man alive is the ball carrying here this afternoon. The Cardinals try to stave off elimination. They're in progress with the Pirates for an update. We check in with Matt Yaloff back at the MLB Network studios. Hey, Matty, it's a Geico update from Pittsburgh. Top of the first inning. Charlie Morton gets Matt Adams with a man on base. So we're going bottom one right now. Pirates lead this best of five, two games to one. Back to Matt and Jim. Matt, thanks. Pirates Cardinals has turned into a the good series that everybody thought it would be when they drew each other in the division set. Two out bases empty now for Jed Lowry. Lowry hitless today and hitless in the series 0 for 10 with five strikeouts. A ball and a strike from Jose Alvarez. Brandon Moss waits next. He's hit one of the three home runs for Oakland today. One of these two teams will be facing that same elimination scenario that the Cardinals are faced with today, that the Braves are faced with later on today, and that the Rays are faced with this afternoon. All teams trailing. In their best of five series. Yeah. A strike to Lowry, two and two. You see Porcello just tossing out the bullpen. I think what Jim Leland would like, with Alvarez being a lefty and all the A's left hand hitters, is if he can if he can stay out of trouble, he can eat up some innings, and obviously you'd like to save your veteran pitchers for when you have a chance uh, or with a lead. High fly ball into right for Torrey Hunter to retire the side. For the first time this afternoon, the Oakland A's go down in order. To the bottom of the sixth, it's the A's in control on top six to three.
get ready because the countdown to 2014 is just beginning with TV's only morning show dedicated just to baseball. Join me and Harold Reynolds for Hot Stove weekdays, 9 Eastern. 9 Eastern, wow, that's early. Beginning November 4th right here on MLB Network. A's have gone to the bullpen after five innings from Jared Parker. They turn to the right-hander Dan Otero here in the sixth. Otero made his postseason debut on Friday and retired all four Tigers that he faced. Been very good down the stretch. Did not allow a run over his last eight outings dating back to the middle of September. And here he gets the meat of the Tigers order Cabrera fielder and Martinez. Cabrera grounds to the left side Lowry backhands and gets him one away. Boy, that's as a pitcher you'd like to have uh, Cabrera leading off and they did. Well, Fielder's coming up right now. Uh, he started that, or part of that big rally, and this is how Parker went at him. They never came inside. Watch every pitch. Change up. Down the way. Down the way. Fielder fouls it off. Gets a piece of it. Took that one. And then finally, another one out there. So consistently down and away. Never came up and in. It made him pay the price. Otero starts him inside and misses. A ball and no strikes to Fielder. Who singled and scored back in the fourth. And it's just two for ten in the series so far. One and one to Prince Fielder. Dan Otero spent some years with the San Francisco Giants organization. He was a 21st round draft selection back in 2007. Had some opportunities with the big league Giants, but for the most part, time in their minor league system. He was Yankee property for all of three days this spring after being claimed on waivers by New York. Yankees put him on waivers after a, a few days, and then the A's picked him up, and he's been a, a steady contributor to Bob Melvin's bullpen this year. Got to give Oakland's scouting department. And reporting into Billy Bean, a lot of credit for that. And you got scouts and cross checkers, and they look at a guy, file a report, and if you don't have the resources that uh, some of the bigger market teams does, you, you pick up a guy like that, you see some value in him, and uh, Bob Melvin does, as you mentioned earlier, Matt, such a great job of making these guys feel comfortable and that uh, and that they're a part of the team. Encourages him. One ball and two strikes to Prince Fielder. Two and two now. Victor Martinez waiting on deck. Martinez has an RBI double today. Three runs on five hits for the Tigers. They came back from their initial 3 0 deficit to tie it in the fourth. A double play ball abbreviated what looked like a possible rally in the fifth. And Fielders aboard with one away here in the sixth. Well, yeah, well placed ground ball right up the middle. Otero as is the uh, you see him make a motion with his glove as is the case pitchers don't really get themselves back in position to field the comebackers. And, uh, Lowry with a nice effort had no chance to get leather on that one. So here's Victor Martinez now with one out and one on batting once again from the left side of the plate. Johnny Peralta waits on deck. To first for Moss. And Oakland turns a double play in back to back innings. That one rather unconventional. Good enough to end the inning anyway. And a nice pick by Lowry. There's the leaping grab, the tag, and then watch Lowry on the receiving end pick a short hop. Tag fielder.
rookie Jose Alvarez continues top half of the seventh. He'll get Brandon Moss, part of a terrific double play that helped end the bottom half of the sixth. That'll be Moss, Cespedes, and Smith. Now this this will be just a one hitter appearance for Alvarez because we've been watching the veteran Porcello warm up in the bullpen and he's uh, he's getting game ready now he's getting serious so he'll be in there to face Cespedes. There's a strike to Moss to make it one and one Brandon Moss until the fifth inning was searching to snap out of what had been a tough offensive start to the series. Had been one for eight with seven strikeouts until the solo home run in the fifth. Behind here, one and two. These are tough looks for Brandon, as those numbers indicate. Just a 200 hitter against Southpaws. And that's, uh, I would say, rather typical today. I mean, I don't think there's ever been a time in baseball. When as many teams have as many pitchers that can throw hard, that have secondary pitches coming out of the bullpen, as a hitter, you get one look at them and that's it. A full count, three balls and two strikes. Brandon Moss, time with a couple of organizations prior to coming to Oakland. Pirate property, Red Sox property. Here's the payoff pitch home to him. Swing and a miss. The strikeout for Alvarez starts the top half of the seventh. There's Cespedes now. He has been announced. And still no sign of Jim Leland or Jeff Jones. Well, I guess the deal was maybe if Moss got on, because uh, Porcello was definitely getting ready. Yeah. So it will be Cespedes to face the left-hander here with one out and the base is empty. But I think uh, you could kind of read Jim Leland's mind here. Porcello is the kind of guy. Yeah, he's done he's done a lot of throwing out there but uh, you know now he's going back to just tossing it easy he's a sinker baller and I think what Leland is saying every out I can get there's Rick continuing to throw every out I can get out of Alvarez Porcello though he'll not start in this series can be a big factor coming out of the pen two balls and a strike to count to Jonas Cespedes. Well, it's a bunch of left-handed batters coming up after Cespedes. We made the note when we signed on that it's a left-handed heavy lineup that Bob Melvin offered today. Yeah, and that's the advantage of it. You, you managers, if they have the opportunity to do it, they'll stack their lineup left, right, left, right. So they're going to force the opposing manager to make a lot of switches if they want that uh, matchup all the time. The 2 2 to Cespedes. A call strike three. Boy, and Cespedes shot a glare back to Gary Garling. Well, let's see why. Looked like a good pitch. I don't know if he thought it was high or if he thought it was inside. Mm. It's a hot sun beating on that blacktop. Yeah. Keep talking. You'll be walking that last block. Hey, yeah. hey, hey, Gary Darling. I don't think that was what was on Cespedes' mind, but it's a pretty good pitch. Yeah. Two gone now. And here's Seth Smith. His two run home run in the fifth signaled the end for Sanchez today and gave the A's the lead they currently enjoy 6 3 Oakland. Chopper in the infield. Infante backhands, and the A's go away in order for the second straight inning. Jose Alvarez able to hold the deficit at three.
Welcome back to this division series telecast on MLB Network presented by Geico with Jim Codd and Sam Ryan Matt Vaskersian here in Detroit. The A's continue to lead the Tigers six to three Dan Otero looking for a second scoreless inning in relief. Johnny Peralta with other ideas a reminder watch live alternate angle companion coverage live batting practice streams and full audio broadcasts to the 2013 division series and National League Championship Series with postseason TV. Peralta starts the inning with a great ball to the right side and man has that Oakland infield been tight today. I mean these are not these are not your normal routine infield hops and Moss not known for his defense one got by him today but he's made a couple of sparkling plays Donaldson of course the the one that's really had an effect on the game and Lowry to end the last inning that's a nice play right there for a guy who's known for his bat and not his glove. So here's Alex Avila now with one away. Avila 0 for 2 so far this afternoon. Dan Otero came in for Parker after five. You know, we told the story last half inning about how Dan Otero arrived in an A's uniform, having been claimed off waivers by the Yankees. We said at the time that he was Yankee property for three days and while that's technically true. Ray Fossey the longtime Oakland A's broadcaster. And one of the best catchers in franchise history might I add. Came in to share a little anecdote with us between innings apparently. Otero was claimed on waivers mid flight. The Yankees claimed him off waivers from the Giants. He was flying to join the Yankees when the A's claimed him on waivers. So That's he, caught in a real rundown there. <laughs> coast to coast. There's Ray Fossey. There's Ray. I knew him more when he was with the Indians coming up. Uh, Ray's working on the radio side this afternoon. Imagine that was rather disorienting for Dan. Yeah. You land and somebody tells you, hey, no, you're not here. You're you're going somewhere else. He misses to Avila. One and two now. Good sinking action on that fastball. Omar Infante waits next. We talked about the shift earlier today and the fact that the A's have used it successfully so far this afternoon. Here it is again. That's how 76 foot difference from where Donaldson would normally play at third base. And all of those uh, numbers you see are the amount that they shift compared to normal. Now, if you, you see the Tigers when they're out there, they're kind of old fashioned in that. They kind of feel for every ball that's hit into that shift. You might give up one like right now if Avila would have to trickle one down the third baseline. It's going to be an easy base hit. And uh, most of his at bats, his hits, as you see, almost half of them are pulled down the right field line. Thus, the exaggerated shift. No shift necessary this time. No. A swing and a miss. And there are two away here in the seventh. For an update on the division series action elsewhere, Matt Yeloff at the MLB Network Studios. Thanks a lot, Matty. A Geico update from Pittsburgh, and Michael Waka is locked in for St. Louis. Already has four strikeouts through two innings, and remember, he allowed only one hit in his last start of the regular season. Pittsburgh leads the series 2-1. All right, Matt. Thanks, and Matt's keeping his eye on that one. Talking a little bit about the division series action to come later this afternoon as Omar Infante stands in. And news out of the Dodgers Brave series, Jim, this is something of a surprise that Don Mattingly has called an audible today for game four with the Braves. Ricky Nolasco, the scheduled starter. It's going to be Clayton Kershaw pitching on three days rest for just the second time in his career later tonight in L.A. I don't blame him. If I've got Kershaw and Brinky and got a chance to put it away, uh, I do it. 
you know, the, the four day rest, I mean, that thing is, there's much too much made out of that. Uh, first of all, pitchers, they don't pitch nine innings that much anymore. So you start them on the fourth day. If you got a lead after seven, you're going to your bullpen anyway. So I, uh, I like the move. I wish more managers would do it, particularly in the postseason. Well, I, that's pretty easy for you to say. You were one of the most resilient guys in the history of the game. Yeah, but but I was not different than any of the other pitchers there. And these guys are bigger, stronger. It's a shattered back in front of the plate, and another fine play by Josh Donaldson. Hold that thought. Okay. We'll get back to it after <laughs> another scoreless inning from Dan Otero. Through seven, still 6 3 Oakland. In the game of baseball, there was a special place. They have built it. And now we have come. It's the Oakland A's against the Detroit Tigers. It is in heaven, but it's pretty darn close. Back in Detroit for the top of the eighth inning. Oakland on top by three. It'll be Josh Reddick to lead things off. A pinch hitter waits next as Derek Norris has grabbed a bat. And then Eric Sogard. The rookie left-hander Jose Alvarez, who came on in replace of Sanchez in the fifth, continuing here in the eighth. Boy, he's getting some nice postseason experience and pitching very well. Got the hard throwing left hander Sean Doolittle getting hot for the A's. Reddick sends that one out to right center. Enough hang time for Austin Jackson, and there's one away. So now the pinch hitter. And one that has been a pinch hitting superstar for the A's this year. His last three home runs have all been as a pinch hitter. July 27th against the Angels in the turn back clock unis. August 6th against the Reds. September 27th against the Mariners. Derek Norris three pinch hit home runs tied for the third most in Major League Baseball this year. And there's no chance Jim Leland is going to let the lefty face him here. A pitching change for Detroit. They go back to the bullpen for the second time. Into a crucial 11th hour in this game three and we'll be right back. Coming up after the game this afternoon MLB tonight has all the postseason highlights and breakdowns from the award winning analysts of MLB Network all the postseason trauma all in one place right after the game presented by Bacardi Oakard Adam Jones joining Greg Amsinger Harold Reynolds and Kevin Millar right after the A's and Tigers. Jose Veras enters on a T-Mobile pitching change trying to keep this at a three run deficit for Detroit. He'll face the pinch hitter Derek Norris with one out and the base is empty. Veteran right hander then with uh, Houston the Tigers I mean uh, the Yankees now with the Tigers. Barris making his third career postseason appearance today had a couple of postseason opportunities as a Yankee back in 2007. Nice to see Jose Alvarez got a really warm. Ovation from the Tiger fans paying attention to the fact that here's a rookie and picture of postseason ball and all of his teammates right there at the top step. That's a that's a nice confidence booster for him. Three scoreless innings by Alvarez as he turns it over to Veras here in the eighth. Two balls and a strike to Derek Norris. Looked like Jim Leland was going to bring him in back in the fifth inning to face. Uh, Seth Smith but he opted to stay one more hitter with Sanchez. Big two run blow a big difference in the ball game. Right now. Two on to Norris is in for a strike. Number two catcher and Bob Melvin has opted to carry three catchers. So he can afford to pinch hit Norris. Managers always like to have that extra catcher in reserve as they're prone to get foul tips on their fingers, et cetera. Good break a ball there. It's a foul tip that's hung on to for the second out of the inning. <laughs> 
Good curveball from Ferris. You know, you start eyeballing what the Tigers have offensively coming up in the eighth and ninth. And they are guaranteed at least one more pass for the big fellows, Cabrera and Fielder. In the eighth inning, they'll have number nine, Jose Iglesias, then Jackson and Hunter. Cabrera, Fielder, and V Mart to follow. Two gone bases empty now for Eric Sogard. Jose Veras trying to keep the deficit at three, something Alvarez did successfully over three scoreless innings. And the well traveled right hander trying to follow suit. And I do mean well traveled. Eight years in the big leagues, and Jose Veras has spent time with seven different major league teams. I think Mike Morgan still has the record that. Actually, Phenom that came up with the A's right handed. He's been with 13 or had been with 13. The Mike Morgan Highway, yep. as they've called it, which since I believe has been surpassed. Oh, by Octavio Dortel. Oh, yes. Gone for 14, huh? But it took Jose Veras a while to get there. 32 years old. Acquired by the Astros around the midway point this year to shore up the Tigers' bullpen. Sogard on a couple of hops out to Fielder. The A's go away in order for the third straight inning. It's time for the Tigers' offense to make some noise. To the bottom of the eighth. Detroit will have the top of the order down three. This division series telecast on MLB Network is presented by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And sponsored in part by the new 2014 Jeep Grand Cherokee. And by the Venture Card from Capital One. Earn double miles you can actually use. Some of the statues outside Comerica Park lionizing some of the franchise greats. The more immediate concern for this franchise is a three run deficit and a hard throwing left hander by the name of Sean Doolittle. He'll face the top of the Tigers order in the last of the eight. And Doolittle starts Austin Jackson with strike one. Derek Norris who pinch hit takes over the catching chores. Jackson Hunter Cabrera in the eighth. It's a big fastball swung on and missed. Yeah you don't have to wait too long for it to get up there if you're a hitter against Sean Doolittle. His job is to whether they're left hand hitters or right get through the eighth and Grant Belfour is the guy to use in the ninth. Sean Doolittle looks like he'd fit in pretty well in the Red Sox bullpen. Fear the beard. Doolittle, one of a number of A's relievers to finish the regular season in rather tough standing. Just a .63 ERA down the stretch. Wow. And he blows it right past Austin Jackson, one away. Well, there's a lot of stats in, in baseball. My favorite for the pitchers, and this goes back to uh, my friend Mariana McCauley, who's been doing pitching stats for me for 20 years, retired now, but it's power and control. You get a guy who strikes out more hitters than he allows base runners, that's the optimum. I mean, Kimbrel of the Braves right now is at the top of the list, but it seems like every team has guys that can come out and strike out more hitters than they allow base runners. A ball and no strikes the count to Tory Hunter. The four time All Star one for three this afternoon. He singled and scored one of the three runs in the fourth. That was really the last big moment for this sold out crowd when the Tigers got three in the fourth inning to pull even at three. Oakland then struck for three in response in the fifth, and we have stayed there ever since. And 
Hunter's behind one and two. Yeah, it's so hard for a hitter to have it, a real aggressive swing against a pitcher like Doolittle. I mean, you just kind of feel it for the ball and hope you can make contact. You have to try to shorten up your swing. Sean Doolittle was on major league radars long before the Oakland A's got their meat hooks into him. He was originally drafted as a 39th rounder by the Braves in 2004, but instead went to the University of Virginia because he wanted to pitch. The Braves rather wanted to hit. The Braves drafted him as a pitcher. He didn't make the conversion to the mound full time until the 2011 season as Oakland property. Full count to Tory Hunter. In fact, if you had asked members of the Doolittle family if someone in their family tree were to reach a major league pitching mound in an Oakland uniform, they might have guessed Sean's brother, Ryan, who was drafted by the A's back in 2008. And that misses inside. Well, it's given him a little hope that base on balls. It was Torrey Hunter's single off Jared Parker. Earlier in the game that started a rally. And the A's have done a good job so far being able to face Miguel Cabrera with nobody on base, but not this time. Cabrera has singled, flied to center, and grounded to shortstop today. On the first pitch, popped him up. Two away. Well, that's the pitch he's, as most hitters, most vulnerable to. Good high fastball. It's the toughest pitch to catch up with. See right there, tries to bring the hands in. Now you throw him that same pitch. Thigh high in the outside corner, he'll drive it over the right field wall, but that's just a very tough pitch for any hitter to catch up with. But that took a lot of the enthusiasm out of what had yep. become a charged up, sold out crowd. Now it's Fielder with two out. Prince has a couple of singles this afternoon. That's a waste. I mean, I, again, I wouldn't think that's called from the bench, but you got two out in a three run lead. Let Torrey Hunter steal all the bases he wants. Well, as we discussed, the Tigers dead last in Major League Baseball and stolen bases as a team. Torrey Hunter took only three bags this year. That's his lowest total of his terrific career. Nothing in one the count to Prince Fielder. Line to shortstop right to Jed Lowry. Nothing in the Detroit half of the eighth. We're headed to the ninth inning in Detroit this afternoon with Oakland on top by three. Oakland A's have used a combination of the long ball and some terrific defense this afternoon to take a three run advantage to the top half of the ninth. Coco Crisp will begin the process of trying to pad that lead. Top of the order Crisp, Donaldson, and Lowry. As Jose Ferris continues out of the Tiger bullpen. Grant Balfour, the rage up in the Oakland pen preparing for the bottom half of the ninth. 
his country will get an opening day next year. Grant from Australia. Dodgers and Diamondbacks going out there, I believe. Open the season. I don't know if that's been confirmed or not, but I uh, strong talk about that. I think there's about a handful of Aussies in the big leagues. One suspects that uh, David Nilsson and Graham Lloyd may make an appearance in some capacity. Yeah, I saw Graham. I was there this uh, winter. Did actually did the Australian League All-Star game on the radio, and Graham was there. He's pitching coach for Perth. Three balls and no strikes. The count to Coco Crisp. Fans of the Oakland A's hope that there's an opening day in Oakland for a lot of years moving forward. A ballpark situation that remains in flux. Constant threats to relocate the team either to San Jose or elsewhere. Meanwhile a extremely loyal Oakland slash East Bay fan base would love them to stay right where they are. Coco Crisp with another base hit this afternoon. This one rattles around in the right field corner. And Crisp wheels into second with his second leadoff double of the day. A reminder the MLB fan cave is coming back in 2014. You can be a part of next season's team by going to MLB.fancave or MLBfancave.com and apply now. Yeah I think the the Oakland team and, and getting back to crisp right now with that double it's Bob Melvin telling us before the game you know most most teams look for the middle of their lineup to drive the bus Bob Melvin said we need Coco crisp he's our engine and boy he's done his part today but but Oakland is probably in the last few years the most underappreciated and unnoticed successful baseball team with not a lot of marquee names. When Jason Giambi was there, they uh, came, kind of came out of nowhere and went to postseason. Strike one to Josh Donaldson. Of course, I, I think still there's so much talk in past years of the great team being the, the big red machine, but you'd be hard pressed to find a more dominant team than the Oakland A's 72 3 and 4. Sal Bando, Joe Rudy, Vita Blue, Campy Campaneris. That 72 team, of course, had to go through the Tigers to get to the World Series that year. Into the shortstop hole, Iglesias got caught on a weird hop and then got tied up with his footwork. And Donaldson reaches base safely. Yeah, you're right about the footwork, and that's one of the most important things for a middle infielder. Looked like he wanted to stop and plant his foot. His spike got caught right there, lost his balance, and obviously no chance to get Donaldson after that. Yeah, and then you had the Tony La Russa years. And they had Dave Stewart, Bob Welch, Conseco, McGuire, Walt Weiss now managing the Rockies. They had another run of success. Those teams got a lot of uh, national publicity, but this Oakland team, they. They just kind of go along rather unnoticed. There's Jed Lowry now 0 for 4 today and hitless 0 for 11 in the series. A double by Crisp an infield single for Donaldson. You know talking about the postseason history between these two teams it started in 72. It continued in 2006. In a series that was all Tigers. Tigers. Oakland in the ALCS on their way to the World Series that year. The dramatic finishing blow, the Magli Ordonez home run. Coco Crisp enjoying a three hit game is the first in Oakland postseason franchise history since that 2006 series against the Tigers. Milton Bradley. Cash through with a three hit game in an A's uniform. Monopolized it. Nicely done. <laughs> a lot of game playing going on. <laughs> Luke Pitconan is up in the bullpen for Detroit. 
boy a three run deficit is one thing. As quiet as the Tigers offense has been in this series they can ill afford to fall behind any further. There is however this encouraging bit of information for Tiger fans. Recalling the last time these two teams met in this ballpark at the end of August. Detroit at one point trailed six to one. They trailed six to three in the ninth. Grant Balfour came in for what looked like a routine save opportunity gave up four in the ninth including a walk off home run by Torrey Hunter. And that's what prevented the A's from sweeping four against the Tigers. So it has been done. The Tigers have come back from a deficit like this against this very opponent and against the man who they'll likely face in the bottom of the inning. Still a ball and two strikes on Jed Lowry. Barris delivers the next one too is swung on and missed. Jed Lowry's gone down swinging again. Three strikeouts for the Oakland shortstop today. Good sinking fastball moving away. Well, the Tigers have really done a nice job handling Lowry a 290 hitter during the regular season. He's been quiet in three games in this division series and now it's Brandon Moss. It's a note worth repeating. That in recent division series history. When two teams enter game three tied one win apiece the team that wins game three has taken nine of the last ten division series. We've reached a pivotal time in a pivotal game three this afternoon Ryan Cook up in the Oakland bullpen along with Grant Balfour. Say why would they have two guys up I think if uh, the Oakland scores a few runs comfortable margin they'll save Balfour and bring in Cook. But Ryan Cook would love the opportunity to exercise some demons at a rocky outing here in game two of last year's division series. One that led to the Tigers coming back for a game two win. A ball and a strike to count to Brandon Moss batting with one away and runners at first and second Oakland up three here late top half of the ninth. Good pitch. Knee high outside corner. Same old thing, low and away, high and tight. Two best areas to pitch hitters. And a swing and a miss. Another big strikeout for Jose Veras. Well, he's one out away from getting out of a tight jam. Same spot, same movement. Two strikes, expand the strike zone, and chalk up another strikeout. Here's Cespedes now. He has singled and reached on an error today. Two out runners at first and second. The game four starters in this series, and that's tomorrow. 5 Eastern 2 Pacific on TBS Dan Straley for Oakland Doug Fister for the Tigers. That's what's been announced. I'm quite sure that if Oakland holds on to win this game today 
there will be more than one person suggesting Max Scherzer on short rest. That is extremely unlikely to happen. Yeah, I don't think Detroit. I, I don't think the Tigers would make that bold move like the Dodgers are going to make tonight. And for those that may have missed that discussion a little while ago, Don Mattingly has changed things up for Los Angeles in their game four tonight. They want to finish the Braves at home this evening. Clayton Kershaw will start instead of Ricky Nolasco. And we mentioned something that needs adjusting. Mentioned that it would be just the second time in Kershaw's career he started on three days rest. It's really the first time because that three days rest appearance previously came in relief. Says but his falls behind one and two now. Kind of like having Koufax and Drysdale available to win one game for you, Kershaw and Grinky. Boy, we remember how easy that sounded with uh, Pryor and Wood and the 2003 Chicago Cubs. Yeah. Still got to go out there and play. That's right. Well, Paris, one pitch from getting out of a sticky situation, that would at least give the Tigers some hope in the bottom of the ninth. Ball and two strikes the count to Yohannes Cespedes. When the Tigers bat in the last of the ninth, they'll have Victor Martinez, Johnny Peralta, and Alex Avila. I guess we forgot Randy Johnson and Kurt Schilling in that mix. Yeah. They got it done. <laughs> the career lines against Grant Balfour from V. Mark Peralta and Avila. Next one to the Cespedes. A chopper to the left side of the infield. Cabrera thought about the oh. short run. Cespedes quit running. It's time for the bottom of the ninth. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. Grant Balfour will try to close down game three. This copyrighted telecast is presented by Authority, the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball, and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent to the last of the ninth and a series of changes. Now how about this. I mean this is inexcusable. He stopped running the bases would have been loaded with Seth Smith coming up. So should the Tigers do something miraculous here you look at Derek Barton going in at first base a little better glove there and Grant Belfour on the mound that's boy you hate to see that for any player player assessment this caliber. Could have put a lot more pressure on uh, the Tigers. Bases loaded and two out, and a hitter like Seth Smith coming up. So it's Grant Balfour that comes on in what Oakland hopes is the final T Mobile pitching change of the afternoon. Martinez, Peralta, and Avila. And a sold out crowd reinvigorated here in the last of the night. Fastball stays high. Grant Balfour picked up his first career postseason win after pitching a scoreless top of the ninth inning Saturday in Oakland. The Oakland A's franchise record holder for consecutive saves. The distinction here in this July when he saved his 41st straight. Breaking Hall of Famer Dennis Eckersley's record. Eck, by the way, will be back in the booth tomorrow for game four of this series with Buck Martinez and Don Orsillo. Game four tomorrow on TBS, 5 Eastern, 2 Pacific. Grant Belfour is the antithesis of Mariano Rivera, the greatest closer of all time who stands out there very cool, calm, 
You never know if he had a 10 run lead. He was down to Belfour will bring a lot of emotion. Yeah, he's amped. He's got that Australian rugby mentality. Martinez delivered two of the three Tigers runs with the double in the fourth. Fights off a one two pitch to stay alive. Whoa. Get back up on the Boy, those attempts flared in an awful hurry. Victor Martinez and Grant Balfour join and benches have cleared. My goodness. I don't know who said something first. And then you could hear, unfortunately, the. Uh, Sound that came out. Here come the bullpens now. Boy, that's the last thing Oakland wants. I mean, no question. First, yeah, first of all, you see Cespedes loaf on a ground ball, and you got a three-run lead, and you start doing something to uh, to ignite the opposition. You know, it's the old when you lose, say little; when you win, say less. Just get out there and hope you get three outs and go you, home. You know this. This is Grant Balfour being Grant Balfour. Yeah. He he is as you mentioned Jim. He's amped up. He talks a lot. It's not personalized but he talks a lot. In fact he has the demeanor of a guy that wants to fight you. That's not his intention. That's how he gets himself out there ready to throw in the ninth. Martinez took exception to that talk offered a few words back and then it escalated really quickly. We apologize for some of the live audio that we may have caught during that really quick emotional outburst. Foul ball. Yeah, you can talk to yourself. Mark the Bird Fidrich did it right in here, but you know, not toward the hitter. You know that's there, there's nothing productive about that for Grant Balfour. That's only going to work against you. That, I mean that's nothing different than what Balfour's done all year. And in this case Martinez took exception and now they're going to try to sort this out and get the emotions back. But Jim I couldn't agree with you more. That's the last thing Oakland wants to have happen is to wake up the Tigers here in the ninth. Warnings have been issued to both sides. And Jim Leland just wants to clarify that with the home plate umpire and crew chief Gary Darling. Gary Darling by the way did a very good job of making sure that didn't escalate any further. Now, there's nothing wrong with being emotional out there talking to yourself but there's absolutely no sense in directing those kind of comments toward the opposing hitter. Now he's really got this what's left of the crowd into it. Wow. A lot of them left after Fielder made the last out of the eighth inning. Martinez lines to right and there's one away. Boy they're still talking to each other. Well, you notice that Darren Barton very very wisely got over there between his pitcher and. Well, that's a huge out. Martinez gets on base there. Yeah. And there's a greater likelihood that Balfour is unnerved in the ninth. Well, I wasn't trying to be Kreskin or predict, but he certainly is different than Mariano Rivera, isn't he? <laughs> that's that's safe to say for sure. Here's Johnny Peralta now with one gun, and Balfour delivers a strike. Is that why they nicknamed him the Rage? I think we saw it right there, didn't yeah. we? You know, it's something that we talk about on MLB Tonight, nightly, when the late night show is up following the West Coast action. 
that Grant Balfour has the demeanor of a guy who wants to brawl after every pitch. That's not his intention. That's how he is. And in this case, it came close to really coming back and biting him. A ball and two strikes, the count to Johnny Peralta. Oh, what an unexpected turn this game has taken. And I have to believe, Jim, that that blown save at the end of August is on Grant Balfour's mind in some capacity here. A guy who pitches with a chip on his shoulder and it's a little extra bit of a chip against this team in this ballpark. Nothing wrong with that but you don't uh, put it on display like you did toward Victor Martinez. And a full count to Peralta now three and two. So all these fans want right now is one base runner. We're going to hear the noise level. Alex Avila waiting on deck. Here's the payoff pitch. Are down to their final out of the afternoon. Chase ball four. Alex Avila's hitless this afternoon. Strike one to Avila. Detroit down to their final strike. It was almost a calendar year ago. October 7th of 2012 Grant Balfour was the losing pitcher in game two of the 2012 ALDS that experience perhaps still on his mind the blown save in August somewhere in that coconut and he has come out here this afternoon with an extra chip a ball and two strikes the count to Alex Avila. Omar Infante hoping for a chance next. Outside the three in the Detroit half of the fourth, the Tigers lineup has been quiet today. Only two hits other than those in the fourth. And it's two and two now to Avila. Count three balls and two strikes. Avila fell behind quickly. He's done a nice job to get it back to full three and two. The bottom of the Tigers' order has been held hitless today. Avila, Infante, and Iglesias have combined 0 for 9.
There's ball four. The two out walk keeps hope alive. You got to do quite the babysitting job if you're a catcher in the ninth inning for the A's. See Derek Norris out there to. You know there's a difference between using that emotion for you and then in that case probably overthrowing. Down to that last strike. So that brings the tying run into the on deck circle and if it gets that far Don Kelly would pinch hit. First things first it's Omar Infante with two out and a runner aboard. And now Balfour just having trouble locating. Fonte in a admittedly small sample size two for four he's had some success against Balfour and it's one and one boy this is a real high wire act for Oakland Bob Melvin and Kurt Young just trying to coax one final out out of their closer this afternoon. In the air to right, Reddick back, and Oakland hangs on to win game three. The emotions in the last of the ninth made it interesting, but the A's take a two games to one advantage with a chance to close out the Tigers in Detroit tomorrow night. Well the A's jumped out to that three run lead. Jared Parker couldn't shut things down and then Annabel Sanchez who's been so great here at Comerica Park. Could not shut down the A's in the fourth inning and that was a difference in the ball game. Boy the big story for Oakland outside the shenanigans in the last of the ninth the home run. Oakland hit 186 during the regular season the most of any playoff team they had been kept completely quiet in that regard in games one and two. But the home run is the difference in game three three Oakland long balls and Bob Melvin can smile and exhale. The A's win game three on the road and again are one win away from advancing to the ALCS. Let's check in with Sam Ryan. Brandon Moss, Seth Smith, uh, up 2-1 now, but not without some tension there in the ninth. I know you guys were out of the game at that point, but what did you notice between the two of them? Oh, uh, you know, just middle of the competition everybody's blood gets going a little bit obviously uh, Balf is a character on the mound so uh, you know there's going to be some fireworks sometimes it is what it is. Each of you guys with a home run in the fifth I got to ask you about the fifth and really the mindset going in after they tied it up in the bottom of the fourth. Answer that. Hey, you want to respond and uh, you know we had a, a possibility of a shutdown inning earlier they came back and uh, it was it was nice for Brandon to get us on the board there early in the fourth inning maybe I don't know what inning was it fifth fifth inning um, <laughs> but for us to score some runs and, and get back on top there was was big and two batters later you had the two run home run Sanchez someone who you have really good career numbers against what do you attribute that success to. Um, I don't know. I, maybe I'm in a good place every time I face him. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but uh, you know, it sets me at first, and you know, he seemed to be worried about him a little bit. And I got a good pitch over the plate, three-one, and was able to get the barrel to it. Brandon, about Victor, I got to ask you about your defense. Had the double in the fourth to really part of that inning, but then his next time up, you turned the inning-ending double play. What did you do differently defensively there? Um, the first time I was just off the bag a little bit more, trying to protect the hole a little bit. Um, that time, obviously, I just stayed a little bit closer to the bag so that if anything did go down the line, I'd be able to get to it. Well, congratulations, guys, up two games to one now. Thank you.
Back to you guys. All right, Sam, thanks. And Jim, uh, a couple of Oakland A's who are playing down the emotions of the ninth, no big deal, and playing down their success today with the home run and the victory, a 6-3 A's win. Yeah, they are. And I look at the line score, nine runs, 18 hits, one error total between the two teams. For me, the game, Josh Donaldson's play on the inning-ending double play where Miguel Cabrera would have come up with two men on. To me, that was the game winner. He deserves a save for that play. Boy, and almost on cue, a light rain starting to fall now that the game is complete as the uh, Tiger faithful hoping that their team isn't rained out and finished off 24 hours from now. Oakland takes a two games to one lead in the series coming up next on MLB Network. Full highlights and analysis on MLB Tonight presented by Bacardi Oakheart. Greg Amsinger, Harold Reynolds, Kevin Millar, and Adam Jones are standing by in the studio for Jim Cotton, Sam Ryan, Matt Vaskersian saying good night. Thanks for watching this division series telecast on MLB Network presented by Geico. Maddie, thank you very much. We're here in Studio 3. What do we think of uh, Balfour and Victor Martinez in that ninth inning? Caught everyone off guard, right? Well, there's a little history. I mean, Balfour yells and screams at people, and if you don't know him, you get offended. And I think Victor got offended. Does he do it all the time? Yeah, he does it all the time. Listen, it he happens in a foul ball. H, he fouled the ball back. It's a, it's a one-two pitch right here, fouled it off. And Victor was staring straight out at Balfour. And you see him staring. Well, what's going to happen? Balfour's going to say, what are you staring at? Next thing you know, we got a little... Man to man argument here in bad words. It's up to me. I like it. I think it's uh, something that's, that could possibly spark the Tigers. They haven't been swinging the bat as well. It could be something that spark them. Obviously, Balfour is known to yell and scream on the mat. Spark. Mountain. That's spark. what I was saying. But, but it's, it, it, that's, that's who Balfour is. Adam, is there protocol there, though? Does he do something that if a normal pitcher did it, after a pitch, walk towards home plate like that? Position players would be upset with it. But because it's him, we let it slide. Right. Well, th th he does it on a consistent basis. If it's just something that's random, then you take, you take a, a appropriate action. If he does it every single time, it's what it is. You faced him. Right. But if he walks towards me, then I take it personal. Then I walk you towards You ever take back. him deep? I have not. But if I do, I'm probably going to scream around the bases. Because if he strikes <laughs> me out, he's probably going to scream and yell at me as I'm walking back. So it's, like I said, it's a, you're, 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 you're not going to win at it. But... If he does it every day, then then it's like a, like the bulk move. If a pitcher does the same thing in routine, can't call the ball. They did score three runs. And what do you think, Kev? Do you think there's something to what Adam's saying that maybe this could spark the team? Now their backs are up against the wall. They can they can be eliminated. I don't know what game. was sparked. It was a foul ball. Victor stared at Balfour. Balfour obviously felt it was about three seconds extra fish eyeing me. And what are you looking at? So Victor sparked the team maybe? Was that just a spark to try spark the team? This is always great for baseball. We're like, we got energized. All of a sudden set down by three. We felt like we were on the seat of our pants. The bottom line is the Tigers got to find a way to win a game. Spark, no spark. They need to find a way to get out there and win a game because this Oakland A's team, we know, if they get rolling, they become an extremely dangerous team. Well, they, they swing about the great in this ball. Ballpark. They lit him up yes. earlier in the yeah. year there. But I, I, the Balfour thing is dominating the news. That's the story. But my point was, he does it every pitch. You know, it wasn't just an isolated incident where we saw Victor staring at him. He yells all the time. So I wouldn't have taken that much exception to it because if you follow him, he's yelling and screaming, but I think he's yelling at himself. Right. And sometimes he is right. yelling at See, that's his routine, Harold. He's not yeah. yelling like throwing strikes. Hey, you! He's not throwing. Hey, you! It's just a routine he goes through to pump him up. You see him extra deep breath. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. You're I mean, he's not for He's all straight. Good night, Moy. How you doing? <laughs> Give me a little bite of beer, bro, little Moy. You know, that's the way it is. But there are two sides to every story. If I'm hitting and I the guy's screaming at you, you get chapped. You do. I hated K Rod. Hate him. You guys picked him up. Couldn't stand him with the uh, Angels. Striking you out and looking at the. I'm like, I'm going to get him. And I got him once. You know what? I love no one five hit that ball, too. <laughs> I want a little extra. Here's another look. Uh, Balfour, <laughs> we all talk about how overly intense he is. And this is the foul ball. And the fact that Victor Martinez didn't even look at where the ball went. Yeah, but we're, we're getting one side of it. We see Victor. We need to get the other camera and see Balfour because he started chirping before Victor did. I know Kevin said he stared him down, but Balfour was chirping too. I'm just saying, Adam, there's an even story here. It sounds to me like you're one of a large group of players that just ignore his antics when he's out there. Yeah, well, me, I don't really care what, what the pitcher is doing. He can do whatever he, he wants to do. Have, have, have your fun. I don't care. But if I get you, 
I'm gonna let you know. Just the number just, ten hit him. Uh, you'll, you'll, like you'll, you'll see the ten, but right. it's it, you know <laughs> it's give and take. Balfour does it every single time. You know I've seen him do it against us. And I think the first time I seen it, I kind of was like, what's going on here? This guy might not be as cool as I thought. But then I seen it the next time and the next time. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> yeah. this is who he is. Let's get him so he can't do it. I'll tell you what, the A's got to Anibal Sanchez. This is a guy that had the best ERA in the American League. Adam, you faced him. He's a dominant pitcher. He went four and a third, and there was stuff that was hanging in the zone that they were feasting on. Hit the ball out of the yard. Well, the the we all know the A's are, are not a high average team, but they're guys that can really drive the ball at the ballpark. They're patient. They're not going to go up there and just free swing. And you know, Anibal Sanchez is a big strikeout pitcher, and he got his strikeouts, but the balls that he left over the plate, they did not miss at mm -hmm. all. They had a great game plan. I mean, make him get the ball up. Yeah. It's like watching a slow pitch softball team. The guy flips the ball, you go, no, nope, not high enough. You know, and that's the way they are. They strike out, strike out, strike out, and then they catch one. And the thing that makes it work is they play good defense mm -hmm. and they pitch. You see on our age, man. You see her looked at me when we talk about slow pitch softball. You're right, age. That's what the old guys do, but you said something right. Anibal Sanchez, they made him get the ball up. When he Absolutely. has the ball down, he's tough. He's the ERA later. The ball up, he's average. Boom, knick knack, paddywhack. Greg, back to you. Thank you very much. So the A's could knock out the Detroit Tigers in their game four. There is a game four in Pittsburgh and a developing story. The Cardinals have a two run home run from Matt Holiday, and it's given them a two nothing lead. We're on to the seventh inning. The story is young Michael Waka, who had nine career starts in 2013. And Six innings, no hits. He has walked one batter and struck out eight. He has not given up a hit through six innings. Nine starts in a professional scene. Nine starts, Greg, nine. In the big Four leagues. of those starts in the big leagues, he's allowed three hits or less. And I've said that over and over, but it's still remarkable to me. This is a rookie. Nine starts, Jonesy. Not three runs or less, three hits or less. That's impressive. You know, like you said, I think a great point we were talking about is the – the St. Louis Cardinals, they have Chris Carpenter. Is it Chris, Chris Carpenter? Yep, Carpenter He's, and Wainwright. He, Carpenter and Wainwright. Having those two, those are Cy Young winners. Those are guys I know Carpenter's out for the year. Yeah. But he's been on that top step, and I'm sure he's been preaching to these rookies. And with having, like I said, having Yadier behind the dish, it, I would be comfortable pitching to Yadier. Yeah. You know, and the other thing here. You can't pitch. A little bit. No, you can't change pitch it. at all, Adam. We're, we're, we're seeing a little bit, a little bit of a trend here in baseball too. Where we saw Sonny Gray come up and deal. We've watched a lot of young players come Garrett up, young Cole. pitchers come Garrett up Cole. and deal. Yeah. But we're also looking at the fact that this is why they get called up in June. They're knocking down arbitration years. These guys will be breaking in spring training. You know, so we're saying, oh, he's got nine stars, oh, he's got five stars, six stars. It's a product of the system. Because by now, Waka would have 20, 25 starts if they would have not worried about a time clock financially and brought him out of spring training. You know what I'm saying? It's amazing that he's still doing what he's doing at the short period of time. But, but these guys are electric arms that would have broke camp had people not looking at the clock of being able to have control. He was just drafted, and they've got a lot of pitching depth. In reality, doesn't matter. Shelby Miller's a first round pick. He could win rookie of the year if there wasn't a kid named Jose Fernandez and Yasiel Puig in the National League. They picked this kid over Shelby Miller to start. Miller's got 15 wins. I get it, but we're talking about exceptional, exceptional generational guys. I've said this before. We saw it with Cole the other day. Walker's in that category. Griffey made the big leagues at 19. Okay? Hey. He drafted a year early. I'm this is Griffey. This is an exceptional group of young people. Mike Trout, you get to the big leagues at 20 and do what he's doing. Bryce Harper, those Manny are exceptional. Machado. Manny Machado. You know what I'm saying? Those are exceptional groups. We're, we're on a, a renaissance of seeing a lot of young superstar players that we're going to talk about for 10 years. We may not see this again for another five years. That's the way it goes in baseball. You made a great point talking about the fact that a lot of players, they call them up second half of uh, May. Obviously, June 1st is a big day of a lot of the prospects getting called up. And I've always looked at it as, I see what they do. Obviously, they get three full, they get the rest of that year and three full years out of you before arbitration. But I always look at it, if you're ready, you're ready. You know, um, we've had, we, I remember our case with Weeders. We mm -hmm. called him up May 25th. That made us have three full years of him. The guy was ready from day one. But the time, the clock, you want, you want to start that clock a little bit later to have a little bit more team control. And, you know, if you're ready, 
put them on the mound, Time put them in money. the lineup. Yeah. I always thought that this is the big leagues we're trying to win, but you know what? That's the way it's a business also behind the scenes. Yeah, uh, how about this? 15 innings pitch for Michael Walk against the Pittsburgh Pirates. He's given up two hits. Wow. 15 innings. That game can be seen on TBS. Michael Walk has not given up a hit through six innings against the Pittsburgh mm. Pirates in game four. Now, getting back to the game you just saw here on MLB Network, the A's beat the Tigers 6-3, to three, getting the save. Grant Balfour, who was very upset, uh, heated exchange with Victor Martinez, not as heated in, during this interview with our own Sam Ryan. Great, your teammates have said you're a little bit of a, an animated guy on the mound and you like to talk a little bit. What happened there with the exchange between you, yourself and Victor? Uh, I mean, you know, you're staring me down, so I said, you know, why are you staring me down? What's your problem right now? You got a problem? Come out here. So he came out, just a few words, <laughs> whatever. No big deal. I like it. You, you do like it? Yeah, I'm all up for it. Whatever. Whatever you want to bring on, it's all good. What were you saying? I just like I said, I said, he's staring me down, he's staring me eye to eye like he wanted to come out, so I said, come on out. All right, <laughs> Kev, this goes back to what you were saying. This is my point. He has a routine. He's a breather. He's a yeller. He's a, you know, if you know Grant Balfour, he's a, I mean, he's a great guy. Mm -hmm. The moral of the story is he fouled the ball off. Victor wasn't even looking at the ball. He was staring right at Balfour. So if a man's going to stare at you like this, the first reaction to you, if I'm just staring at you, what are you looking at? Exactly. Right? Yeah. So that's all. Well, and then it became a man-to-man -man scene. It's a premeditated thing, though, is what I'm saying. He didn't just all of a sudden know that Belfort started yelling. He had to have known and faced him in the past. Of course. He yells and screams. They know so his So I'm going to stay on him, and I'm going to stare this dude down. I'm ready to hit. Oh, yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Rainey Johnson used to stare at you when you were walking away after he struck you out, and he stared at Angry Renteria one time in Yankee Stadium and kept staring. I'm like... Man, wait, wait till he's looking at you like you play a tough guy. Then you stare at Randy Johnson when he struck you out, and then he, he would look away. <laughs> so at this point, they know Balfour's antics. So Victor already knows, okay, let's get him. And that was part of like, you know, hey, I'll let him know. But Balfour said, well, what do you got? And not only that, this is a grumpy group of Tigers. Six earned runs in 27 innings, last 27 innings against the Oakland A's. Yeah, the game's fun when you hit. Right. <laughs> Ain't no problem this team, not no. this team could become a colossal disappointment. They were the preseason favorite to go to the World Series out of the American League. They were. And if they're knocked out in the ALDS, that would be shocking. I wouldn't necessarily say it's shocking because of the team they're running into. You run into one of the best pitching staffs in all of baseball. They, they pitch, pitch and pitch and pitch. And, you know, good pitching beats good hitting. And, and catch the baseball. And they catch the baseball. They but play Scherzer, Berlander, Sanchez, that threesome, and you're going to knock that's them too, out? That's a tough threesome, but if you can scrape three or four runs off those guys and your your pitchers are not allowing anything you can win and it's amazing that they're not allowing anything when Nothing. you got the names in the lineup of the Detroit Tigers Torrey Hunter Miguel Cabrera they're matching them pitch for pitch Greg that's what they're doing okay this is what goes on the postseason you're not gonna have the, the names the Detroit Tigers have the names and they're healthy and rich threesome but if you can match him pitch for pitch just like Verlander he mm -hmm. he threw a wonderful game Okay? Wonderful. Well, guess what? Sonny matched him pitch for pitch and gave his team a chance to win. So as a starting pitcher, you're facing Clayton Kershaw. Well, of course, Chris Medlin's not Clayton Kershaw. But if you can match him pitch for pitch, game one, which he didn't, that's all you're looking for. And Oakland A's can match pitch for pitch. There's news out of L.A. that, uh, you know, Freddie Garcia for the Braves is going to face now Clayton Kershaw. The Dodgers are going to try to put the Braves away tonight. It was Ricky Nolasco. The Dodgers switched that, and now it's Clayton Kershaw. Does Jim Leland consider... Second guessing Doug Fister when you know Max Scherzer could pitch. You know why I say no? Fister's the one guy who can keep this offense off balance. He's going to be able to throw a little off speed. They're sitting on a lot of, they're, just, they're letting it fly. If you look at the balls the A's are not hitting, it's breaking pitches and changeups. You throw a fastball, they're smoking that thing. So I'm looking at Fister, the one guy who can keep the ball in the ballpark, little sinkers and little changeups. He may be able to offset their offense. I say no, he doesn't change it up. I, I, I like it with Fister. You know, you want to change your rotations, keep it as is. You know, just what if, what if Fister goes out, throws a great game? Or what if you move up Scherzer, move up Verlander, and they don't pitch as well as you thought they were going to pitch? Mm. Keep your rotation. Fister is a very good starter. It's not like he's, you know, yeah. a, a spot starter. He's a very right. uh, top of the rotation starter. So you go with him, and he's has, I think he has pretty good numbers against the A's. Let it fly. Yeah, the A's win again, 6-3, to three, the final score. What everyone's talking about is this uh, dust-up that took place in the ninth inning. Victor Martinez at the plate, fouled the pitch off. It was the fourth pitch of the at-bat. 
and it, it would be entertaining to go through each pitch to, yeah, see, what was, to see what was taking place, and we'll do that later. But this is what took place after the foul ball. Now, the skipper of the A's, Bob Melvin, just sat down at the podium and addressed the media. The skirmish at the end, what was your uh, take or perception on what happened there? I, I'm not really sure. Um, I know Balf talks to himself quite a bit. I think sometimes maybe uh, players think that maybe he's talking to him. I have not talked to Balfour about it, so I'm not 100% sure. But that's kind of my take at this point. About the pitching performance you got again, uh, holding them to three runs, all in one run, one inning. Right. And then. And, and, We've been obviously pitching really well. Our starters, uh, you know, are keeping us in the game. You know, I think in Jared's case, maybe pitching to the score of the game a little bit today, but the bullpen came in and shut it down. So, you know, we're fortunate enough to be able to keep quite an offensive club, uh, you know, to this point, kind of at bay. When the uh, Tigers break the scoreless streak uh, there, I believe in the uh, fourth, how important was it for you guys to respond as quickly as you did? Right. No, because the momentum definitely shifted. Crowd got into it. Now all of a sudden it's a tie game that felt like a game that we were semi in control of. Uh, and for, you know, Moss comes right back and hits a home run. That's a huge swing in momentum for us. Uh, you know, at the time it feels like more than just a solo home run to get the lead again and, and try to get the, you know, to get the uh, momentum back in our dugout. So. Big swing for us, and then to continue to swing the bat well after that was huge for us. Bob, it's just a matter of time being patient, and, and the guys start swinging the bat better. And Moss and Donaldson just, I mean, was, and was it tough to be patient and, and wait till till they kind of broke out? No, I mean, look, we we had some two well pitched games against us. I mean, I've been asked about the strikeouts. The reason we had the strikeouts is because Scherzer and Verlander were on it. And, you know, we, we have a tendency to strike out some anyway because we do hit some homers, but uh, we're just looking for an opportunity to get some good pitches to hit, and we didn't get too many in the Scherzer and Verlander game. Any other questions? Thank you. Mm -hmm. There's the skipper, Bob Melvin. You, know, you got to tip your cap to a guy like Jared Parker, Kev, because in the pregame show, we talked about the fact he was 0-4 against this team, yeah. ERA over 6.5. He knew that. The Tigers knew that. And he came out and competed and got him another win. He really does, Greg. And you, and you said the word competes. He competes on that mound. And, you know, we, ha he, we, we talked about him having to execute his pitches keep the ball down. You don't want to get the ball up to a lamp like the Tigers or they're going to get hot quick at home. But he did a great job of just keeping the ball down, competing on that mound, and putting away those stats. Those over four, yeah. you know, and yeah. winless, just like David Price did in Texas, just like pitchers have a chance to do. Great job by Jared Parker. A's win 6-3 the final. Let's go to uh, Comerica Park, bringing the guys that called this game on MLB Network, Matt Vasgersian and Jim Cott. Guys, are you still scratching your head trying to understand what went down in the ninth inning between Balfour and Victor Martinez? Uh, I'm not. I mean, I heard Adam talk about it. I, I understand the emotion of being out there in the mound. I, I like to talk to myself, look at the mound, but I never tried to get any kind of confrontation uh, with a hitter. I just like to keep them as quiet and relaxed as possible. But obviously, Balfour, uh, that, that's part of his arsenal. Yeah, we, we talked about it too, Greg, and I, you guys had the same discussion we did, and, and we've talked about it, all of us, uh, individually during the course of the regular season. That's how dude is. He <laughs> wants to fight you. He's like that. And, y you know, Victor Martinez, I think, as Adam said, if you're not used to that act, you look at it and you think it's being personalized, which it's not. You can understand how a, a hitter would take that that way, but this is Balfour being Balfour. I mean, he's... You know, Ozzy, 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 oi, 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 yeah. let's, let's have a bare knuckles boxing match <laughs> well, and I, figure this out. I got to tell you guys, before the game today, uh, first of all, I got to see two guys that I was so happy to see without uniforms on and bats in their hand, Al Kaline and Willie Horton. Now, I don't know if you were young or old enough to remember Willie Horton. Uh, he's on the wall out here at Comerica Park. If Belfour had walked down and said that to Billy uh, Willie Horton, <laughs> yeah. I feel for him. Uh, <laughs> different still story. Be out there in the mound. <laughs> it would have been a different outcome. You know, the outcome, yeah. guys, for Anibal Sanchez, I don't know if anyone expected four and a third, five earned runs, more specifically three home runs he served up. What went wrong for Anibal? 
You know, he came out after uh, Jared Parker did not have a shutdown inning. You know, he let the Tigers back into it. Now they got a tie game, and Sanchez came out, really looked like he had command of things. But I think, uh, and not making excuses for him, I think the dry weather didn't have a, a sharpness on his breaking ball, and Adam could address that. The crispness of the curve, the change, and he just made three mistake pitches, down and into a lefty and a couple right there. And anytime he gives up three home runs in one game, you know he's off form. There, there are no numbers that, that really allow you to get insight into the Oakland A's. Because, and here's, here's a little litmus test. If we were to told you before the series started that Scherzer and Verlander would each post double-digit strikeout games in games one and two, and Oakland would be two for 23 with runners in scoring position in three games to start the series, would you ever have guessed that the A's would have a two games to one lead? That, I mean, that's the kind of uh, the kind of season they've had, and it's carried over into the postseason. There's an inexplicable team dynamic. Melvin constantly has people in the right place to succeed that kind of belies a traditional stats look at a team. The, the A's win, and it makes a lot of people scratch their heads, which is why I think a lot of those fans back in Oakland uh, who come dressed for a costume party in many cases, <laughs> I think that's why they have wrapped their arms around this team the way they have. Yeah, Jim, you know, I got a question for you because it's hard to watch. You know, they get runners on first and second. They don't move anybody. They get a runner second early in the first inning. They don't do that. They sit back, and I said earlier, it's like watching slow pitch softball. Make him get it up. Yeah. We're going to hit a bomb. So the question is, how do you shut down a lineup like that? Well, you got to throw strikes early in the count because that's part of Bob Melvin's deal. He doesn't want to give up outs. He doesn't hit and run, doesn't uh, steal a lot, and he wants to drive the pitcher's pitch count up. So as a pitcher, the way, I mean, like Pittsburgh Pirates back in the 70s with Stargell and those guys, you, you'd either be taking a shower in the second inning or you'd get them out because you, you got to just go at them, strike one, strike two, and I think that's the way you have to pitch uh, against the Oakland A's. If I could just go off hitting for a minute, Harold, and, and, and this would be uh, to your skill out in the field. To me, the game today was the play that Josh Donaldson made. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, if he, that was some difficult hop. Yeah, and was. if he doesn't he come terrific. up with that, it, he doesn't come up with that. There's two on Cabrera's hitting. To me, some of the plays they made in the infield today were the, were the ball game. Yeah, Donaldson had six assists today, guys, and that was one off a division series record for a third baseman. And they were not routine chances. To Jim's point earlier, there were short hops. Uh, there were tricky angles. There were quick release throws. He was really splendid defensively today. And so was Brandon Moss, by the way. Yeah, and, and another pick on the, end, on the receiving end by Lowry. And then another play by Moss, who's really not known for his glove. So little things like that, you know, just one of those that gets away, that can turn a game completely around. So they did all the right things at the right time today. Matt Bezgers and Jim Cott there. Great stuff this afternoon in Detroit. The A's get the win by a score of 6-3. to three, And we're going to take a break. We come back, complete highlights of Game 3. Three long balls from guys like Moss and company. A's Tigers, complete wrap-up next. MLB Tonight is presented by Bacardi Oakheart. Bold and smooth. What spiced rum should taste like? Take the Oakheart Challenge at Bacardi.com slash Oakheart Challenge. MLB tonight presented by Bacardi Oakheart live inside Studio 3. Greg Amsing with Harold Reynolds, Kevin Millar, and Baltimore Orioles All Star center fielder Adam Jones. Um, Adam, you never faced Mike Walker, right? I haven't. That's a good thing for you, right? <laughs> Apparently, by his last two starts. <laughs> yes, I'd say so. This is a developing story right now on TBS. The Pirates and Cardinals are playing. 2 0 to score thanks to a Matt Holiday two run homer and Michael Walker who hasn't given up a hit through seven innings. 
In his last 51 innings, he's given up just one hit. Remember, his last regular season start, which was just his ninth in his career, he went eight and two-thirds before giving up a hit, and it was an infield hit. Michael Walker, no hitting the Pittsburgh Pirates at PNC. Are you kidding me? He's got great stuff. I mean, that speaks... Well, that's really earth. Really, Harold. Whoa, I just told tell you me something hey, now. I'll tell you what he's doing with the stuff that's so great. 98. He's got a nasty hook and a changeup today. He's throwing. He hasn't even thrown a breaking ball. Mm -hmm. Fastball changeup. That combination of being able to pick up a guy high 90s to a changeup. It's very difficult. We talked about dominating a baseball game. You can dominate this game with fastball changeup. Before he started, he has thrown 81 or 82 percent fastballs and 18 percent changeups, zero breaking balls, zero hits, and his last hit has been an infield hit. So it's 51 score or innings pitch with an infield hit. When's the last time he's allowed to hit outside the infield? It's crazy. What he's doing, Adam? Right now. He, he's he's Dylan. He's Dylan. He's Dylan. He's you don't want to face him. Why not? Why would not? I, I always want to face anybody. <laughs> I but don't know. He's, 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 he's trusting his catcher. He's trusting his stuff, more importantly. And he, his confidence. Confidence can get you through anything. And Man. to go back to St. Louis for the Cardinals, more importantly, yeah, a no hitter. That's history to do that in the, in the postseason. But to send this thing back to St. Louis, we talked to Marlon Bird in the pregame show. He mm -hmm. didn't want to go back to St. Louis for a game five. No, he did not. But, and, but I don't think they knew what they were going to run into either. In Waka, you know what I anticipate him doing this. You want to go back and look at what he did his last time when he had a no-no going to eight and two-thirds? Yeah. Here's the type of stuff this guy possesses. There's a nasty wipeout changeup. There's a fastball up in the zone. This is the Washington Nationals. This isn't like he faced the Orioles and Adam Jones. <laughs> <laughs> He even plays the real team. Not Brian right? Roberts. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was, I couldn't help God it. God, he it was cold. I can't help it. My God, I can't help it. Adam probably would have turned that heater around because he'd have been looking for it. Oh, every pitch. Oh, no, 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 no. Just stay with him now. Stay but, hard on him. Don't no, get him start telling me. No, no. Turn hey, but, but this kid, I think that he's got a, not just a legitimate shot because he's down at the bottom of the eighth, but I think that game right there. He was eight and two thirds, and he had a high chop infield knock that took it away from him. I believe when you get to this territory, you understand, okay, I'm here. And he knows, okay, take a deep breath, I want to execute, I can go ahead and pitch around the guy. But he's in a serious game, it's two nut in this game. So that changes a little bit. Little hitters are lucky now. It. Let's get that straight. He can have all the experience, but they are luck. I mean, you got to have a play somewhere along the line, right. right? You can execute all you want, but it's one broken bat away, or you know, yeah. like Zimmerman no, said, yeah. that was a lucky hit. But unless you blow guys away. Yeah, and, and he's been doing that. Spots his fastball. He, he does both. Yeah. He throws 98 miles an hour. He can drop his change up to 85. You ever been a no hitter? Not pitch to, or but on defense as well? No. Uh, the longest we've we've went into this year about four or five times heading into the sixth or seventh inning being being no hit. Oh, Weren't you with us year. when uh, Buck Colts no hit us in Boston? No, that's 07. Oh, yeah, I remember I thought, watching. Okay, that. yeah, yeah. Tell you what, I, the the, the, I felt for you guys that day. I yeah. appreciate that. <laughs> Your shortstop for the Mariners. The interesting <laughs> dynamic of this one. A no hitter in the postseason is way different than the regular season because if he's got a no no going to regular season, I'll dive and throw a ball away and get yeah. the air before I let that no no go away. Right now, you throw it away and get an air. Here goes the postseason. Right. Boom, right. we lose the game. Right. Right. You know what I mean? So it, it's a little different dynamic here. Yeah, the other no hitters, uh, we had Roy Halladay, October 6th with his, Don Larson, October 8th. This is, of course, October 7th. How about that? That means it's going to happen. Greg, is it amazing? That means it's going to happen. Look at you. Sixth, seventh, and eighth. It just fits. Silly the stars you, Singer. You want to throw that day. Again, you're saying it's in the postseason, but the season is on the line. If the Cardinals lose, they, they're done. Right, and true. this kid's got the whole season on his shoulders, and he's doing this right now. Now, before the game, Marlon Bird was kind enough to join us. I asked him, hey, you don't want to go back to St. Louis, do you? And listen to his very candid response. We do not want to go back. That that is no that will be no good for us. We're trying to close it out here today. You know, you know it's a combination of things of going back to St. Louis, facing Wayne Wright, which is just unbelievable. We've been unbelievable all year long, his whole career. So, you know, we, we're we're trying to shut it down today and uh, and celebrate at home. At the moment, it's not looking good. Uh, Waka has gone seven and a third now and has not given up a, a hit. But you got Wayne Wright. If the Cardinals somehow pull this off. And now Michael Waka is the pitcher everyone's talking about, where before it was Sonny Gray and Garrett Cole. Changes the way we view the St. Louis Cardinals well, don't going forward. Don't worry about forward. that. Why? Well, you know why? Why? He just get bombed us. <laughs> Pedro what? Alvarez. 
It's <laughs> over, by the way, the oh. no hitter. Uh, it was a solo home run by Pedro Alvarez. Hey, you you Three one scared count. me. 3 yeah. 1 count. Three one, one count. got the head out. See you later. I was getting ready to go off, and then you scared me. You're looking away. <laughs> you sneaking. I say, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. That, that's how Harold rolls. Okay, so let's show you the score. Pedro Alvarez does it again. I mean, Adam, I know you're in the American League. You can get a chance to see an awful lot of Pedro Alvarez, right. but you have to appreciate the power of this guy. Well, a good thing about what we do get to see of Pedro Alvarez is we're 12 miles away from each other in spring training. So cool. we get to see each other spring six, seven times, and I've always been impressed with him. He can move at third base. He has tremendous power to all parts of the field. I'm just waiting for him just to take that next step and just become uh, just a tad bit better. He's got 30 and 100 this year. Mm -hmm. Next year, they're going to expect the same thing. But I would say he, he's hitting 270. It, it changes a lot of things for him. He just brought life back into PNC Park. The place is bouncing right now. 2-1 the score. Cardinals still with the lead, breaking up Michael Waka's no-hitter. We're going to take a break on MLB tonight. When we come back, much more on the swing and A's, no. swinging for the fences in Motown. And we'll get more reaction to the little uh, dust-up between Balfour and V-Mart next. So right here on MLB Network, A's Tigers game three in Detroit. There's Johnny Peralta the, starting in left field. The, what we say, the ball will find you, right? Yeah, I mean, it challenged him early. This he makes this look easy. He does. He did great footwork. Went back to the wall, got it. Actually made a catch. The big league shortstop, H. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Later in the inning, Eric Sogard pops this one off. Iglesias goes out. Ajax comes in, but it's Peralta. Great right play man? there. Oh, My yes. goodness gracious. He had, to, he had to call that out early. Jackson's going to catch it. <laughs> He's coming over to catch the ball. We go top three. Still no score. Tigers starting uh, Anibal Sanchez. He led uh, the American League in ERA with a 2.57 Ernie. Yeah, the, you know the tough part of Sanchez? Yeah, they, they start off this inning. Looks like the A's are going to make something happen. Coco had already doubled, and then uh, you end up getting a situation. He pitches through this inning pretty good. Now, he had not pitched, what, in 10 starts? 10 days? 12 days? Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Too hot to handle for Miggy. And this is now the third top spin on that ball makes that play really, really tough. And then look. It's a top spin. The ball hits, and it's like a, it's like a uh, what do you call it? Super ball, super bouncy thingy. What am I trying to say? Bouncy ball. Yeah, yeah. super ball. Uh, crazy ball. Crazy ball. Used to play with it. Yeah. I used to play hacky sack. He's like, hey man, what's the deal? He's supposed to water the field down. <laughs> do you think like, that's what he's upset like, about that? I have no idea. Guarantee. I really Guarantee don't. he's arguing about something. The grounds crew. Grounds crew. Wow. Uh, this is Josh Reddick. Oh my. Grounds crew can't help you on that no, one. No, a solo shot, his second career postseason home run, and eventually came down. A's up two zip. Next batter is the game two hero, Steven Vogt. He goes gap, and that almost got out. Make a name for himself. Look, he runs well. Look at the big catcher, man running. Right? I love seeing catchers leg out triples. Yeah. <laughs> one of my favorite things. How about this? You like that, Adam? Boy, the guns. Right. The show. The show guns would have been in the seats. <laughs> exactly. I'm just That's saying. A great point. Plus, now, what do you think of this, now. Adam? Well, I mean, there's a couple of things. He's a shortstop. I mean, I mean he's, played his, he's played over 1,000 games as shortstop. He has to, first off, make sure he catches the ball the center to the right side of his body. Then you see he's fumbling the exchange. He, he did that just as you would be turning a double play. In the outfield, you can't do that. You have to throw, and also you have to throw through the cutoff man, not to the cutoff. Oh, outstanding stuff. Bottom four, Jared Parker working with a three-run lead. Tigers score the streak in the series up to 20 innings. Here's V-Mart. Here's the guy that's swinging the bat the best on the club right now. He swung back great in Oakland the other night. This here, driving the ball in the corner. Yeah, you should be yelling, let's go, because he's carrying it right now. And this is why Johnny Peralta's in the lineup. That's exactly. it. That's exactly right. Jim Williams, I'm going to make a decision. Two ribbies right there, bam. Man on base, 
he's the man. He's always been a good uh, guy to drive in runs. We go to the flashback for you. Regular season series between these clubs at Comerica. Brandon Moss had four bombs, 10 RBIs in four games. A's won three of those. So back to Monday I'll take in that the fifth, Monday. this is Moss. Moss with a drive to right. Torrey Hunter doesn't even move. That one is gone. This dude's had a year. 30 home runs, 87 RBIs in the regular season. He gives the A's the lead. But Seth Smith would step up with one out. Smith with a drive into the opposite field. That ball's well hit and carrying. Peralta back, and that one's gone! That'll knock Annabel Sanchez from the mix, and the A's have taken a 6-3 to three lead. A's get to Anibal Sanchez. He serves up three home runs. Seth Smith owns him four career bombs against Anibal Sanchez. That one was the straightaway center field. Now it's time to talk a little defense. Bottom five, one off of the Cats. Torrey Hunter hits this ground ball. Josh Donaldson, Kev, he started showing off. I'm going to tell you right now, tremendous third baseman, tough hops all day. I think he had six assists today. If he misses that ball, it's first and second. Miggy's coming up. It's a different game, like Jim Codd said. One yeah. thing I didn't realize also about J Josh Donaldson is he used to catch. Mm -hmm. Therefore, yes. he's not afraid to get down and dirty. He doesn't care if the ball hits Guys, off. Guys, th th that's a nice play, and that one's a routine play. You know? I mean, it really is. It's the big leagues. That's the big is. leagues. you got to make every that routine is. play. No one said that was a great play. The great play was the, the, the great play right there pick. picking it by, by uh, Jed Lowry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so let's not be Tell so excited. Truth. Thank you for curbing our enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> let's go to the seven. <laughs> Jose Alvarez. Happy Downer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, the Moss truth. strikes out. Next batter, it's Cespedes. Mm. Uh, and then Cespedes isn't happy. Look at him staring at home plate up by Gary Darling. Like, did you just do you know That's who I am? a fish eye, Greg. That's you a know fish who I am. So look at Gary Darling. Gotta like say that. something. And I tell you what, this is the Gotta difference maker right here. Doolittle, I know he walks Torrey Hunter here, but man, what a weapon to have you can bring in that can bring that kind of cheddar and get in on hitters mm. when they know the fastball's coming. That's all he has. I mean, he has a secondary pitch, yeah. but his fastball is 90% of what he's throwing. And, yeah. Prince in a line drive, but there's Jed Lowry. Inning over, still 6 3 A's after eight. Another look. Lauer getting up. Prince sitting right there going, ah, Adam. We go, <laughs> we go bottom <laughs> nine. Bring on Grant Balfour. Now the game got interesting. Right. Victor Martinez fouls this off and doesn't look at the baseball, stares at the closer of the A's. Then Balfour starts forcing the blur to come on your TV screen. Well, it's a steakhouse. Where's the best steakhouse? Well, I'll tell you right now. You want to go out Okay, well, invite your friends. And here they all come. <laughs> here come your friends, Greg. Uh, and, and Adam, we all know this is what Grant Balfour does. He jaws to himself, does he not? Exactly. He, he pumps himself up. And if he does it, I say, if he does it every pitch, fine. If he just finds he just wants to do it for that hitter, then you might have a problem with it. Victor Martinez uh, flies out. Balfour is still talking. Well, he's talking to the umpire, though. The umpire already had walked out. Gary Darling did a nice job of diffusing yes. a situation that could have happened. Exactly. He strikes out Peralta. There are two outs after a walk. Omar Infante needs to reach base to make this thing interesting, but he flies out to right field. Reddick has it. Bob Melvin can finally smile. A's win 6 3. They have a 2 1 series lead after taking this game in Detroit. Sanchez, really the surprise story here. Four and a third, five earned runs, three home runs surrendered. After the game, the fiery closer, 